Hello and welcome back. My name is Minky, and great news, everybody. We are bringing back the Tasmanian tiger from extinction. And I'm pretty sure this is how scientists are going to do it. Using sophisticated techniques, they extract the preserved blood from the mosquito and, bingo, dino DNA. But all jokes aside, this is actually very interesting for me because growing up, I always knew about the Tasmanian tiger, or at least like heard of it, knew that it went extinct and it was no longer around and we had some photos of it and things like that. And it was always very intriguing to me. And now we are in 2022 and why not go full Jurassic Park, all right, in the land down under nonetheless and bring back the Tasmanian tiger. I'm guessing they're going to clone it. But I have an article here from the University of Melbourne, the ones who are going to be taking on this expedition of bringing back the dead. And I think we should go ahead and read over it and find out just what's going on because it uh, it is really interesting and it's crazy the times we're living in and what can be done with science nowadays. So let's uh, let's pull up this article and take a look at how this project is getting going. All right, so here is the article. Uh, it's from the University of Melbourne over there in Australia. And uh, it's, it's interesting because they received a gift. So the title reads, No Longer Science Fiction, $5 million gift, de-extinction of the thylacine one step closer. And I hope I'm saying that right, thylacine. And for the remainder of this video, I'm just going to refer to it as the Tasmanian tiger. Uh, just in case I am screwing it up and I don't sound like a complete idiot. Uh, but the five million, that's going to be US dollars, I believe. Uh, I think it was 3.2 or 3.4 million euros. And so quite a significant donation. Um, I mean, maybe not by today's standards. I mean, millions are like whatever now when it comes to projects and research. But it's still quite a bit for, you know, one single thing like bringing back a, a marsupial, right? So let's uh, scroll down and take a look at what this article has to say. All right, it starts off. The University of Melbourne is establishing a world-class research lab for de-extinction and marsupial conservation science thanks to a $5 million philanthropist gift. So again, a, a big gift, and it was looks like it wasn't uh, like from the government or anything. It was just a, a, a philanthropist gift, like somebody just wanted to give it because they were interested or, or thought it was a good, nice thing to do, or the kindness of their heart, I guess. The gift will be used to establish the Thylacin Integrated Genetic Restoration Research Lab, also known as, uh, I think it's Tigger. I'm guessing that's what they're calling it, is Tigger. That's what I see it as. Tigger, which is kind of a clever name because if you look at Winnie the Pooh, Tigger kind of looked like the stripes and he had kind of, you know, maybe he was a Tasmanian tiger. I don't know. But this was led by Professor Andrew Pask, which we'll, uh, we're going to watch a video in a little bit and we'll hear from uh, Professor Pask in, uh, in a little while, which will develop technologies that could achieve de-extinction of the Tasmanian tiger and provide crucial tools for threatened species conservation. Thanks to the generous funding, we are at a turning point where we can develop the technologies to potentially bring back a species from extinction and help safeguard other marsupials on the brink of disappearing, Professor Pask from the School of Biosciences at the University of Melbourne said. So Professor Pask works at the University of Melbourne. He is uh, from the School of Biosciences. And uh, I'm excited because I didn't really watch the full video um, that we're going to watch in a little bit, but uh, he seems to go into some nitty gritty on, on how the science works. So that should be interesting. Uh, he says, our research proposes nine key steps to de-extinction of the Tasmanian tiger. One of our biggest breakthroughs was sequencing the Tasmanian tiger genome, providing a complete blueprint on how to essentially build a Tasmanian tiger. The funding will allow our lab to move forward and focus on three key areas, improving our understanding of the Tasmanian tiger genome, developing technologies to use marsupial stem cells to make an embryo, and then successfully transfer the embryo into a host surrogate uterus, such as a Dunart or Tasmanian devil. I don't know what a Dunart is. Let me know. Uh, Professor Pass said this. The Tasmanian tiger is a unique marsupial carnivore, also known as the Tasmanian wolf. So Tasmanian wolf, Tasmanian tiger, they go hand in hand, and was once widespread in Australia, but was confined to the island of Tasmania by the time Europeans arrived in the 18th century. It was soon hunted to extinction by colonists, with the last known animal dying in captivity in 1936. So 1936 was the last time it's, uh, it's been seen and it died in captivity. You know, I did look into why the Tasmanian tiger went extinct. Um, I saw that, you know, it was hunted by colonists or, or by hunters, you know, 
And to me, that always, you know, I'm a hunter myself, and I understand that, you know, today, now is a lot different hunting wise than it was, you know, 200, 300 years ago. Uh, we have a lot more rules and conservation efforts in place to keep numbers in check, but not also hunt things to extinction. But I always thought, you know, is it even possible to really hunt something to extinction? I mean, I'm sure it is, but I just look at it in this one aspect, you know, it can already be hard to hunt an animal, right? And hard to find certain animals. Imagine being the guy trying to find the last Tasmanian tiger when you're hunting, right? Like how hard is that to find the last one? I imagine it's pretty hard. And so that got me thinking, you know, are, were there any other reasons, maybe other contributing factors along with the hunting that um, made these animals go extinct? And there was some things talking about, you know, uh, destruction of their native habitat, which if they were already on the island of Tasmania by the time colonists got there, then it would have had to have been by the indigenous people, my guess would have been, or disease, which could very well likely be a contributing factor. Uh, I use the example of deer. Deer right now in the United States are going, getting this thing called chronic wasting disease. Um, it's becoming very contagious and running rampant through the, the white-tailed deer population, and it's uh, very deadly for them. And uh, this is something that we hunt them and but we keep their numbers in check um i can only imagine if people hunted these animals they also were going through in uh, diseases i know maybe introduced through pressure through hunting things like that i imagine it's just more than hunting i guess is what i'm trying to say maybe i'm wrong but i guess i don't know if anybody really knows for sure but i always just thought that that it was kind of uh you know, they're always just like, it was hunted to extinction by colonists. It's the colonists that made them go extinct. And maybe they're right. But I, I find that hard to believe that there wasn't other things that played a factor in, in their extinction. But anyways, I digress. Let's keep going with the article. Sorry. Of all the species proposed for de-extinction, the Tasmanian tiger has arguably been the most compelling case. The Tasmanian habitat has remained largely unchanged, providing the perfect environment to reintroduce the Tasmanian tiger, and it is very likely its reintroduction would be beneficial for the whole eco ecosystem, Professor Pass said. At least 39 Australian mammal species have gone extinct in the past 200 years, and nine are currently listed as critically endangered and at high risk of extinction. Now again, is that all because of hunting? Or are there other reasons and other factors that, that come into play with that? I'm sure there's a lot of different things that could come into play. And I'm also curious, is 39 a lot? I guess I haven't really looked into like what's the average amount for a land mass with this amount of species. Like what's the average amount of extinct species? I mean, it seems kind of high. I don't know, maybe it's not. The tools and methods that will be developed in the Tigger Hub will have immediate conservation benefits for marsupials and provide a means to protect diversity and protect against the loss of species that are threatened or endangered, Professor Pask said. While our ultimate goal is to bring back the Tasmanian tiger, we will immediately apply our advances to conservation science, particular our work in with stem cells, gene editing, and surrogacy to assist with breeding programs to prevent other marsupials from suffering the same fate as the Tasmanian tiger. So I guess this is actually probably, if you really look at it, this might be the bigger, what do you say, the more impactful result of this whole funding for this whole project is is uh conservation now preventing things from going extinct now um with the stuff they're going to learn they're going to be able to sequence genomes from animals that are living today so that they don't ever have to worry about them going extinct in the future i can only imagine it's a lot harder to bring back something that is already extinct like, we, we all saw jurassic park okay i'm going to keep making that reference this is i think maybe the bigger um, more important, exciting thing about the, the program and the Tasmanian tiger aspect is kind of uh, more of a pub publicity thing. I mean, it, don't get me wrong, it would cool, be cool to bring them back and, and everybody would be like, oh my God, you know, we brought it back from extinction and you know, give them a place to live and all that. But it's not like they're around now to be like, oh man, I'm missing my home. I mean, they don't exist right now, right? So I, I think the, the prevention of extinction for other species is probably the more um, important part of this, maybe. That's just my opinion. The donation will come from the Wilson Family Trust. Wilson Family Trust, if you guys out there uh, in Australia or New Zealand or um, 
Tasmania know what this is, let me know. Mr. Russell Wilson said the story of the Tasmanian tiger and its unceremonious exit from this world really touched his family. Oh, so you just gave him $5 million. That's so nice. We came across Professor Pack's incredible work, believe it or not, via some YouTube clips of him talking about his research and passion for the Tasmanian tiger and Australian marsupials. We realized that we are on the verge of a great breakthrough in science through improvements in technology and its application to the genome, Mr. Wilson said. All right, Mr. Wilson watched some YouTube vids and was like, you know what? I got five million bucks laying around. Let's let's give it to the University of Melbourne and bring that sucker back. I mean, that's pretty cool, right? You know, good on him. That's awesome. If you, you know, if you want something done, you know, you know, throw the money at it and get it done. The benefits of this open research will be wide and varied. And I think that's the big overall factor here. It's going to be more than just bringing the Tasmanian tiger back. There's going to be more um, important things, I think, that come out of this Um or as important things, if you want to put it that way. But that, that's an interesting article here. I will link it down in the description below if you want to check it out. But let's uh, switch over here a second and watch the video. And let's actually hear Professor Pass talk about this, uh, this Jurassic Park uh, reality we're going to be living in here pretty soon. All right, so it looks like Sky News did a little article, or I uh, should say a story on this. And uh, we're going to actually see what the Tasmanian tiger looked like, too. I guess they uh, had a black and white video that they turned into color, kind of like they did with the World War II um, videos and stuff. And so you can kind of get a, 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 an idea on what this thing looks like. But let's, uh, let's check it out. I'm kind of excited for this. The Tasmanian tiger could be brought to life if a God, groundbreaking a Melbourne research project is successful. Scientists are working to introduce the species back into the wild 86 years after it was declared extinct. Mimi Becker with the details. You know, before we get into this, guys, just how it walks around, it's weird. It's like a weird kind of walk. I don't know. Maybe it's just because it's like a captive one and it's not doing so hot, but like, they're so interesting. It's like nothing else that looks like that. You know, it's like a hybrid of a lot of things. The Tasmanian tiger is an animal of the past, but in a world first, history could be rewritten with the marsupials said to be brought back to life. Now it's very much, you know, no longer science fiction, but really a Professor science Pask. fact that we have the technology to do this. Professor Andrew Pask is leading the $5 million research project at the University of Melbourne's Thylacine Integrated Genetic Restoration Research Lab. I'm very confident that if we can bring a thylacine back, we can certainly make a very healthy, robust population that should be able to survive back in the wild. Real quick, uh, you said a thylacine. So thylacine, I think I was saying it right, right? Thylacine? All right, all right. It's a weird name, but all right. The tiger team already have a blueprint of the extinct animal's DNA. Their next step is to create the marsupial's cell, which could take up to 10 years. An embryo would then be transferred into a surrogate animal, like a dunnart. Then we could either hand That's breed that baby or it can go into the mother's couch where it can complete that last stage of development. The philanthropic donation allowing other experts to join the groundbreaking project. I don't, see, I don't get science sometimes. I, I love science. I get science. I, I mean, I really love science. But, like, how are you going to put it in a mouse and expect it to look in like a dog later on? I don't know. Maybe, I mean, you know, this is obviously just a news article. It's short, and we're, we're going to be missing a lot of the key details here. That's all irrelevant. The scientists know, they know what they're doing. But my thing is, is $5 million enough to push a project out through 10 years? I'm going to go on a limb and say no. Like, I, I really don't get how you can, if they can say it can take up to 10 years for this to, to work. How is $5 million going to push that this project out through that 10 year mark? That's that's a hat. That's 50. That's $500,000 a year. Right. And you got to think these scientists are making pretty good money, plus the equipment, plus all the, you know, the supplies, the testing stuff, the bills, the rents, all the things should be interesting. I want to see what actually comes of this. One of those like sort of um, getting goosebumps thinking about it now, one of those moments I'll never forget. While it is a step-by-step -step process, it be so if cool if it actually happened. Professor Pass yeah, I hope is it does. hopeful they could create a biobank to help bring back other lost species. There's no DNA. See, real quick, actually, I think that is maybe where they could keep their funding going, right? If they could use this $5 million and put like $4 million four and a half million, whatever, into like this biobank, you know, idea and project like that, and then spend a little bit on the, you know, bringing back the Tasmanian tiger, that would get more people on board and, and say, hey, I'll donate money, you know, whatever. I want to be part of this project because it makes more sense for the, the, the now. And maybe that's how they can end up getting that Tasmanian tiger back to uh, back to Tasmania. I they left in dinosaur bones, so we don't have to worry about a Jurassic Park happening. But for more what? recently, I, wa I wanted a Jurassic Park happening, and I, I 
bro, that's what they all say. It's going to be fine. And then it's not. All right. We've all seen it. They made like 20 Jurassic Park worlds or whatever. Every science has famous last words. The extinct animals, we can certainly, anything is within the realm of, of bringing back. Mimi Becker, nine news. Dinosaurs. All right, so this has been a very interesting kind of news story that's been going on. $5 million, you know, seems like a lot, but at the end of the day, is it enough? Is it enough to push the project out to the 10 years it needs to get the Tasmanian tiger? Or can this project produce more various cool innovations and in technology that will allow it to continue out to that 10 year mark? I'd be cool. I'd be cool with seeing, you know, a Tasmanian tiger come back. I'm just, I'm just going to say it'd be pretty sweet, right? You know, not going to lie. I will uh, have the video and the article linked in the description down below. But if you did like this video, please smash that like button. Consider subscribing. Turn on that bell notification. Share this with your friends. But I really do. Leave a comment down below. If you're Australian, if you're from New Zealand, or whatever. It doesn't even matter. If you're from wherever in the world. Do you want to see the Tasmanian tiger come back? Let me know in the comments down below. But I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Peace, love. We will catch you later. Cheers.